So this question is looking at projectile motion um, and it says the muzzle velocity of a long range rifle at A is 400 meters per second. Determine the two angles of elevation which will permit the projectile to hit the mountain target B. All right, so the first thing for this question is kind of to set up your coordinate system and decide what would be the most appropriate. So I've redrawn the question down here just the important parts um, and because this is a projectile motion question the most natural coordinate system to choose is the Cartesian coordinate system or the XY coordinate system. Now you need to choose a position for the origin in this um, coordinate system and I think the most obvious place to pick um, is at point A so that's where I'm going to set up my origin. So This here is going to be the y-axis and this is going to be the x-axis. Alright, so the equation for projectile motion is, I'll write it over here, S equals SO plus UT plus a half AT squared. So within this equation, S is your final position, SO is your initial position, U is the initial velocity, T is the time it takes, and A is your acceleration. So the first thing that I'm going to do is um, convert my initial velocity into an X and a Y um, component. So let me just draw that out. We know it's 400. This will be the X component. This will be the Y component. And the angle theta is unknown. That's what we're trying to determine in the question. So we can write out our components in terms of theta. So it will be ux is equal to 400 cos theta. And uy is equal to 400 sine theta. All right. So now we can look at what's happening um, in the path from A to B. And we're going to be using this equation here in x and y directions, um, and it's going to turn into a simultaneous um, equations to solve. So let's start off with the x direction, looking at the flight from A to B. So our final position in the x direction is at B, and it's at a distance of 5,000 meters from the origin. Oops, 5,000. Uh, our initial position, SO, in the x direction is going to be at the origin, so at 0. Um, U in the x direction is what we just calculated here, 400 cos theta. And T is the time it takes to do that flight, we don't actually know. And we're going to have a half times the acceleration in the x direction and for this I'm going to assume it's equal to zero um, which means we're neglecting the air resistance so half times zero times the time squared and this will close away so we're left with an equation where 5000 is equal to 400 cos theta t and we have two unknowns in that equation theta and t so in order to prepare for the next step, I'm just going to rearrange this to be t equals uh, 5,000 divided by 400 cos theta, which is the same as 12.5 divided by cos theta. And that's going to be equation 1. So now we need to repeat this process, um, except this time looking in the y direction. So our final position, um, S, in the y direction is equal to um, 1500 meters above the origin, so 1500. Our initial position, SO, in the, in the y direction, sorry, is zero as well. Our initial velocity in the y direction, we decided was 400 sine theta. T 
time. We still don't know. So leave it as T. This time for our acceleration, we're going to be um, considering gravity and it's going to be trying to pull our object um, downwards. So it's going to be negative for the downward thing and 9.8 meters per second squared is gravity. So that becomes our second equation. It's got the same two unknowns of theta and t. Um, so we should be able to solve for a solution. All right, so just making this a little bit simpler, it would become 1500 equals 400 sine theta t. And this can be simplified to 4.9 t squared. And I'll call it equation two. So now it's just a case of substituting and solving. So I can substitute equation one into equation two. And that's what I end up with. Now, unfortunately, this is a bit gross to try and solve manually. Um, reason being is you've got a theta stuck in both cos and sine, and you've got a constant term as well. So really the only way to do it is to use all your trig identities if you want to do it manually. Um, so instead of that, what I'm going to do is just um, solve it on my calculator or Wolfram Alpha um, and just spit out a few solutions that way. So if you solve in Wolfram Alpha, you end up um, being told that there's four different solutions to this problem. So These are the four solutions that you can get out of Wolfram Alpha. So the question now becomes which are the two correct ones? Um, because if I just scroll back up, um, the question asked us, sorry, um, for the two, yep, sorry, all the way up. The question asked for us to determine the two angles um, of elevation which will permit the projectile to hit the mountain target B. So just looking at this diagram, um, you should be able to tell that your angle theta has to be between 0 and 90 degrees. Otherwise, it's not going to make sense. If it's any bigger, you're going to be shooting it backwards. So even though it's a mathematical answer, um, it's not a sensible answer. So that means that we need to pick a theta value between 0 and 90 degrees. So it's going to mean that the final two answers here are the correct ones. So theta has to equal either 26.1 degrees or 80.6 degrees in this case. So that's the answer to that question. Um, see you later.